Hello everyone, welcome to Donna Just Being Real. My channel is about dating, love, relationship, toxic relationships, and vice channel. So if that's your type of commentary, feel free to hit the subscribe button and also the alert button and the like button. And share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section, okay? And the topic that we're going to get into is what partners need to know about each other's sexual goals. Hmm, interesting topic. And I got this topic from um, this article from Psychology Today. I love reading that. Um, and it came out February the 2nd, 2022. So I'm going to also read, I'm going to read the article and stop at points and share my thoughts and then also share my thoughts at the end too. So if this is interesting to you and it was helpful to you, please share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Hmm, whatever it is, just chat up in the comment section. And don't forget to hit the like button. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Okay. Again, I repeat, what partners need to know about each other's sexual goals? And one thing I have to say is, and based on what this article stresses, communication, communication, communication is the key in a relationship. If you don't have good communication, mm, it's not going to be good. All right, let's get into the article. What partners need to know about each other's sexual goals and how open communication can help them get there? People have sex for many reasons known as sexual goals. Those in intimate relationships are generally good at perceiving their partner's sexual goals. Open and honest communication about sexual needs is essential for a happy relationship. People have sex for lots of different reasons. There are times when they do it just for the sheer pleasure of it. Sometimes they have sex because they want something from their partner and other times they do it to please their partner. And then there are times when, when lovers have sex to affirm their bond with each other. Traditional social norms tell us that the only acceptable reasons for having sex is to increase intimacy within a committed relationship. But even in a committed relationship, partners have various and often conflicting reasons for having sex. They might have sex to please the part to please their partner or out of a sense of obligation. Hmm. And even in committed partners can have and even committed partners can have sex for a sheer fun of it. So when your partner agrees to have sex, do you know what the motives are? Mm, question. What are the motives? This is a question that University of Toronto psychologist Northern Elsa Dewe and colleague explored in an article they recently published in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships. What are sexual goals? An individual's motivation for having sex on a particular occasion is known as a person's sexual goal. Presumably, you know why you have just agreed to have sex with your partner, but how well can you perceive what their sexual goal is? Question. Are they doing it because they feel the same way you do? Or are they trying to accomplish something different? When studying, when studying people's motivation for engaging in various acts, psychologists distinguish between approach and avoidance motives. So we're going to get into what's the approach motives, and we're going to get into the avoidance motives. This is very interesting. Stay tuned. Make sure. Put your feedback. Tell me what you think of it, okay? Examples of approach motives would include having sex with your partner for a sheer enjoyment of it, or because you want to feel closer to them. That's the approach motives. Now we're going to get into the avoidance motives. In contrast, avoidance motives would be the reasons such as not wanting to hurt their feelings or rejecting them or fearing that you'll damage the relationship if you do so. Ah, now that's interesting. Okay. In sex as other realms of human behaviors, approach motives generally lead to a better outcome. Yeah, I believe so. 
So we want to go for that approach mode, right, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> okay, we resume reading. We enjoy the spirits more and get a boost in our self-esteem, but we rarely enjoy doing things because we fear a negative outcome out otherwise, and our self-esteem suffers as well. So if you want a sexual encounter to be as satisfying for your partner as it is for you, you'll want to make sure that you're doing it, doing it for approach motives. See, that's the key, that approach motives. But since lovers rarely talk about their reasons for having sex, it's up to each of them to in, intuit, excuse me, eat for each of them to intuit their partner's motives. Previous research showed that people in long-term relationships are generally good at perceiving their partner's intuitions and motivations. This makes sense. After all, since couples need to coordinate their interactions on an ongoing basis, however, little research has touched on issues within the sexual realm until now. How well do people perceive their partner's sexual goals? To learn more about how well people perceive their partner's sexual goals, Adelsa Dewey, and uh, that's the, um, the psychologist, can't pronounce the name too well, but I think y'all got it, and colleagues, recruited 121 couples in a long-term relationship who responded to a daily survey for 21 days. One day on days in which they had sex, each partner indicated their reasons for doing so and also what they thought their partner's reasons were. Because both partners responded to resources could, re could compare partners A's stated sexual goals with partner B's perception of them. In addition, the participants also indicated that their current level of relationship quality and sexual satisfaction. The researchers asked these questions to see whether either of, the, of these was related to their accuracy in perceiving their partner's sexual goals. In general, partners who are better at perceiving their partner's intentions report greater satisfaction in their relationship. So the researchers want to see if this extended to sexual rims as well. The results, the results show that people are pretty accurate at perceiving their partner's sexual goals. Unlike prior researchers, however, perceptual accuracy wasn't okay. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm right here. Wasn't related to either relationship quality or sexual satisfaction in this case. Rather, what matters was whether the perception was positive or negative. That's the key. And that is important. Uh, this is when people perceive their partner as having an approach motive for sex. They felt happier about their relationship and their sex life. Moreover, this was true regardless of the partner's true sexual goals. Why open communication about sex is so important. On further reflection, the pattern of finding making sense, and it matches what most of us have experienced in our own lives. For the most part, people want a sexual encounter to be enjoyable for both partners, and this is true whether it is a one-night stand or lovemaking within a committed relationship. Believing that your partner is having as much fun as you are is the key to thrilling sex. Whereas knowing that they are not really getting into it dampens the pleasure for you as well. And it does. Mm -hmm. The findings from the studies reminds us of the importance of open communication in intimate relationships. Communication, communication. You must communicate with your partner. It's so important. I resume reading. In our culture, sex is often a taboo topic of conversation, even between sex partners. Rather, we expect our partner to be into it, our feelings and intentions. Although we're pretty good at doing so, our relationship can slide into a rut or end in a downward spiral when we're reluctant to express our needs, hoping our partner will somehow read our minds instead. 
you know what? It's not easy like that. You can't read the person's mind. So communication is important. Let me resume reading. Um, especially in a committed relationship, open discussion for sexual needs are essential for long-term happiness. And put that in the comments. Um, do you are you open with your partner when it comes to sex? Are you open? Let them know your sexual needs. Share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. Let me read. Uh, let me continue reading. Instead of just expecting the moment to happen, we need to ask our partner if they are in the mood, listen attentively to their responses, and respect their boundaries. Remember, boundaries. Hmm. Likewise, we need to be open and honest towards our partner. Too often, couples go through a motion of making love without communicating what their needs are, leading to a disappointment experience, disappointing experience for both. Only by listening to your partner and by being open with them can the two of you negotiate sexual encounters that will make your relationship worthwhile. Okay, that's the end of the article. So basically, it's, it's all about communication. Do you open up with your partner? You know, the partner that you're being intimate with, do you share your thoughts of what you like, what you don't like? You know, is, is your partner being open with you? You know, you know, ladies got to be open with the man, and the man has to be open with, with, his, with his lady. And that's what makes it beautiful. Now, like I said here, when they said the approach motives, you know, you... You want the approach mode because the approach mode is like you two on the same page. And that's what makes it more enjoyable. Because when it's more of the avoidance mode, of, mm, someone is happy, but the other person is not happy. And when that's happening, you know, when man and woman is together and someone is not happy, it's not going to be good. It's going to cause problems. And like I said, the relationship is going to go to a rut, you know, or end up breaking up. Or oh, a whole lot of things can just happen. And it's not good. So communication is key. Talk to your partner. Let them know. And if they have a problem, don't understand, not try to listen. <laughs> well, I think you're with the wrong person, you know. But just remember, they can't read your mind. That's the bottom line. Communication is key. So hopefully this article was helpful. I thought it was an awesome one. So remember, it's either to do you know your partner's goals, their sexual goals, and approach motives. Or is it avoidance motives? Which one is it? Share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. And stay tuned for some more of Donna Just Being Real. I got some more commentary coming up for you. All right? And don't forget to hit the like button. So everybody, have this as a great day.